So here we go boys, last matchup of the night. Kebabs attacking first, love and devotion defending. How did the first match go? Uh, this is the first match Evil Mortis, so this is just starting now. Um, let's have a look. So, Love and Devotion have got a massive handful of short swords, a good chunk of pole axes as well, a couple of muskets, dual blade, pike. Um, kebabs have also got a good chunk of short swords. They do, however, have more killing classes, so this might end up going the same way as we just saw. It looks like Love and Devotion are not going to be selling out. They had a lot of people spawning in the back lines between B and C. Uh, probably what's going to happen is they will use the artillery at A and then pull back and set up their first line of defense at like the, the C side of the supply. And Bamboos, thank you for the follow my guy, much appreciated. Let's see how this goes down. So obviously, you got if you were a betting man, you'd have to bet that Kebabs would win this because they are joint top of the table and uh, Love and Devotion are joint bottom. However... You should never discount an enemy, and if kebabs think that it's going to be a pushover, they could get caught out. I know a lot, like, Love and Devotion have definitely been putting in time to do a lot of scrimming. So, oh, wrong, wait, I can just push a key to get rid of that? Oh, learn something new, boys. Good. Right, so there is no sally out, so kebabs were decently set up with a good chunk of modal Imperial uh, IPGs and all the rest of it to, to counter uh, a sally out, just in case. Probably they've been watching matches all night as well and seen multiple sally outs. So I would assume these two teams should be expecting one when they fight. Um, do you want to see like the worst musket player in the game as well, by the way? Look at him. Fucking terrible, terrible player. Why is it all the shit players have like really bad taste as well? Like look at the state of that attire. And the red hair. It's not even red hair. It's like bright orange. Like what? It's like a highlighter on the head. What the hell? It's like her best mate had a period, right? And she just dipped her head straight in it. That's what that looks like. Absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And by the way, that was Bubbles. Terrible player. Who else we got over here that's, that's, a, that's a really bad player? Oh, here we go. Here's some two bad players, look. Although, i got to say, that is a... I was saying that, that's the French one, in it? Nah, it's too French. Shit, looks shit. Terrible. <laughs> that's a decent attire. I like that one. Season 6 in it, I think. Then I'll see with a little crown as well. Papa Ambient. The same as a terrible player though. Right, I swear to god there's some other terrible players on this. Here we go. Broken Vortex. Absolutely useless. That is a disgusting looking Polaxe as well. Green? Green Polaxe? What's that all about? Disappointed. Disappointed. <laughs> so, the attackers have lost three he uh, heroes. Three units. Uh, they're going to get A for free. They didn't really get stalled at all coming in. Um, maybe the defenders, instead of firing at the, the, the siege tower, should have just been firing at units to try and get stuff killed. Blake, far away. Thanks for following my guy. And Maku, Makuka, welcome. How are you doing, bud? You're going to call me a different version every time you come onto the stream. <laughs> Fair play. So this cavalry down here needs to get moved off, man. Otherwise, they're going to start getting killed for no reason. The Yen's already got down there and got killed like a couple of the, the Outriders. Why are they not rolling back? Who's got control of the Outriders? Oh, no. Grandpa GRZ. Shot call of love and devotion. Not keeping an eye on his Outriders. And his poor little Outriders are getting murked here. So A is down. Kebabs have pushed up and got the resupply above B already. They've got a good chunk of players on medium armor as well, so they might be able to just stack up with musket players here as well. Just bomb the living daylights out of Love and Devotion. Uh, Love and Devotion have got a good few units on the back staircase here, obviously in a treb safe position. They need to be careful if they stay too far up and they ro or the kebabs rotate this way, they're going to have a long rotate time to get back around, especially with palace guards. Lovingly known by me as the battle slugs, because they are fucking slow, man. Although they've seen it and they're already pushing their units back down, they've only got the heroes up here. I don't know if they've seen that there's actual rotation coming this way, though. So, Treb coming in, that could actually do work, and they haven't seen it. Oh! Didn't lose any units, though, so they can get straight on the resupply and heal. Looks like the main push from Kebabs is going to come down onto the supply. 
Uh, a smaller push is going to come around the staircase. Bubbles is on it, though, with his shield unit. And Aiz, thank you very much for the follow, my guy. And Makuka, Rocky is better than kebabs. <laughs> oh, my days. Right, so let's see how this fight goes down, then. So we've got a couple of guys from kebabs still up on the thing. Papa Ambience keeping an eye on B. The majority of Love and Devotion is in the middle. They have a lot of cavalry out, man. They've got actually a good chunk of... Um, I don't know if they've got two Outriders. I saw the three sets of cavalry and thought it was all Outriders, but one of them's actually Cataphracts. These Palace Guards need to move. That trip, that trip's not going to do well now, though. Right, so there's, what, four? Four guys pushing down the stairs here. Bubbles' his unit's probably gone already. Obviously, the Outriders can still keep peppering them with their Javelins. This will be able to overwhelm the cavalry here, though. Oh, there is a good chunk of units running around now. I don't think they should have left this so wide open, though. I don't think the Outriders are actually going to do enough damage to get rid of this. They're jumping in over here to kill stuff, but like four or five guys on one pike is is not what you want to be seeing. Uh, the fight on the right-hand side looks like it's going... It's fairly... Ooh, that Treb, though. That Treb was pretty tasty. It looks like that fight's going the way of Love and Devotion. Love and Devotion just killed three heroes over this side as well, and it looks like now they are rotating and stacking on supply. And it looks like... Are they going to clear this? There's still a lot of blue units around, though. Hero-wise, it's very even. It's evening out quite a lot. Uh, these cataphracts need to get in the fight, though. They need to get involved in that fight down there. B still thing. Somebody's capping C. A couple of guys from Love and Devotion on it to stop it now, though. There's just an absolute brawl going here, though. But Love and Devotion are dropping more and more heroes. Again, because kebabs have got more DPS heroes. Probably why they're managing to do that. Uh, and they've managed to take supply, and Love and Devotion have just absolutely hemorrhaged. They've lost nine heroes to Kebabs four. So that was the first death per hero, but Kebabs are now easily going to be able to get C or B. Looks like, is that Ambient that just died? No, Papa Bear just died on C. He wouldn't have been able to pull back from that anyway. There's too many heroes there. We just got stunned up the whole time. So Kebabs have now got B and C. These guys here are going to die as well. Oh, no, it's only Ambient. Okay, I thought there was a couple of guys from Love and Devotion here, but Ambient's screwed, man. What can you do against all that? But, um... I think almost the whole team for, for Love and Devotion got killed there. 12. So three guys didn't die. Everybody else is are on one death. Kebabs are capitalizing very, very nicely here. So Lama the Brave, Flare Star, Sexy Boom, and a few other guys pushing through to get the resupply up here. They have, obviously, enough units. They've got 900. They've only lost 180. The defenders have lost 360. Um, rough. They need to see how they're going to do this. They've got a lot of cavalry on the field. They've got quite a few cataphracts. They've got some javelins out as well. IPGs. They've got flames. They've got tercios. They do have units that can do damage. They just need to make sure they can use them. And if, because they've got, like, aggressive... Like DPS units, especially cavalry, they should maybe think about using it in the more of a flanking position rather than just charging across the point where all of the IPG walks, flames, and trebs and everything is going to be coming. Um, but we'll see, man. We'll see what they do. We'll see what they decide. Yeah, because kebabs have got a decent amount of anti cav, man. They've got the cavs out themselves now. They've got a good chunk of berserkers as well and a unit of uh, archers, which look like are going to be doing some work. So that's not Nam cams, that's the uh, incendiary, I believe. The ambient down here with Berserkers. Probably would prefer to have guys with cavalry running around this way. It looks like Rocky's going to go around now. I probably would have had everyone with cavalry, though, flanking. And then, like, one big flank with a cav. Um, they wouldn't have pushed in anyway until they've softened stuff up. And then, as the cavs push in round, they can either decide to go through the back here or go through the middle. And they should maybe have tried being more aggressive here, the defenders. Because on this point, if you're too passive, it's it's just too easy for the attackers to get in. And if they could have put pressure on with their cavalry coming around the back here, like this wouldn't just be going now. They wouldn't be able to easily push in and start trebbing stuff down. We've got guys flanking around now, though. Rocky and Ruga Kona. Ambient's in the back as well with his Berserkers. His Berserkers are not going to do well against that many heroes and Madao. Plus enemy Berserkers. Cataphract's charging in now. Rocky coming in with his cataphracts, though. I don't know if he's going to do that well there, though. 
Especially with uh, backup from the Berserkers. The Berserkers have pulled back off though. Main fight though has been absolutely cleared up by Kebabs here. So I was concentrating on the little fight and in that time Kebabs managed to push it over easily. Destroy the majority of the units that Love and Devotion had. Although Co Kona and... Um, it was that Papa Bear. Papa Bear managed to get in from behind with their cataphracts and actually do some work. There's more cataphracts coming from the front now as well. So Love and Devotion might be able to clear this up. Hero-wise, both are on the fairly similar. Kiss My Boom's pushing around. Now he might pick up two heroes here if he pushes the two key now. Oh my god, them two players are lucky that the cataphracts didn't hit them. Uh, you've got multiple guys coming from the back here. Actually, the cataphracts coming from behind is actually really good because they've managed to get behind two units of enemy cataphracts. Look at the cataphracts coming in though. This is the only fight, or one of the only fights where cataphracts went banned, and look how many are being played. Both teams have had like 10 sets out already. Kebabs are now getting control of the point. There's only five heroes left for love and devotion. This is GG, I'm afraid. Look at all of the bloody cataphracts up. How many have they got out? Like nine sets of cataphracts. <laughs> that is disgusting. I mean, both teams had a lot of cataphracts out there, so it's not like just kebabs are spamming cataphracts. Like, Love and Devotion had a lot out as well, but like, literally, kebabs have almost got a full team of cataphracts out at the minute. GG to them. They still had 10 minutes on the clock, basically. Brutal, brutal fight. I'm going to click on the post battle so the noise isn't annoying and go back. Right. So, the hero discrepancy was pretty big towards the Atlantic. It's huge at the end. 31 to 7. I, I honestly think as well. We've seen this a couple of times tonight. That is because um, Love and Devotion just had basically short swords. Or like uh, uh, hero classes that are more likely to survive. But they didn't really have the, uh, the aggressive DPS that they would have needed. Especially when you're playing on the CBL rules to, to, to do something. I think that's why it's 31-7 to 7 at the end of the fight. Um, as you can see here, every engagement that was fought, Kebabs won. Um, there was a couple of times where it actually looked like Love and Devotion would be able to pull it back.